Um, it's going to be actually kind of parallel with what we had in the previous presentation, and but a bit more focused on towards like political campaigns. Um, and then again, AI is everywhere. So, so uh, yeah. So once again, uh, nice to see you, everyone here. Uh, the title is going to be like as explaining history and making. So we are talking about some things that we probably will see in the coming years, particularly related with the political campaigns. Um, and then So yeah, so basically I'll just give uh, at the beginning uh, for the outline, I'll just briefly talk about what's the motivation for this work. Um, then I'm gonna go into three particular aspects of political campaigns and within each one we'll see how different anecdotes we have from the recent uh, elections. Um, and then what are the challenges and future research directions? Um, so of course, like when we see from the previous presentation as well, is artificial intelligence is coming along in like almost every aspect of our life. And then that includes the elections as well. And then another focus in this is because in, in the historical perspective, we had the user generated content where people were going, writing things on social media or any other platforms. Now that trend is changing towards more on the AI generated contents. Um, and then another interesting thing is the this particular year, year of elections. Like in 2024, there are elections in almost 60 countries, and that includes like almost half of the world population, including US, India, Pakistan, Indonesia, that recently happened. And then there are many more to come up. And then this gives us a very right time where we actually see how AIGC is being used in these elections, and then how it's gonna go in further or in the future uh, elections. So in this particular case, we've provided like first ever anecdotes of AIGC that are being uh, used in this year's elections, uh, particularly three parts that are like the electorate outreach, how people use AIGC to reach out to the voters, how people like, how, how, sorry, how politicians use um, the AI to reach out to the people or like participate in different political rallies or events, and also the disinformation as well. Um, so in going further in this one, what's really special, oh, I'm sorry about the fonts, I guess. <laughs> um, so yeah, so what's really special about the artificial intelligence is the three main aspects. The first one is the is ability to create content that is very human-like, for, for instance, in case of conversations. Um, it can generate content that is like, it's compared to typical AI like bots kind of thing it has more conversational ability. Um, there's something wrong in here. Um, but then again, the natural language processing, and then on top of all, both of these things is the ability to generate this content. It's like we have these tools like ChatGPT or MidJourney or all these tools have reduced the entry barrier for people to actually generate content. So you don't really have to be really highly technically advanced or like knowledgeable. You just need to have a tool and then anybody can generate this content. And the impact of such content is actually very far reaching. Um, and then particularly in three aspects of political campaigns, um, the first one is the political outreach. So political outreach is like, how do you use different tools to reach out your voters or electorates? Um, examples from the US elections, like not really happened, the election didn't happen yet, but just for the pre preparation in these elections, a senator in the US has already deployed a a uh, color bot is the name of the color bot is Ashley and it's powered by the lang large language models and it has the much more conversational ability. So when you can look at the impact that it can have, it's like instead of like, you know, you just query just like you'd have like typical call, like calls, uh, sport call systems, it's not pre programmed. So you can actually ask whatever question you want to ask. And then based on whatever data it is trained on, it can give you an answer and it we will see in the in the challenges in a bit, like how it can actually impact. But this is the ability where you can actually use these things throughout the time, 24 seven to reach out to voters. Then it's the case of the political politicians participation. So in the case of politician participation, we can actually generate videos or you can actually generate voice or speeches and then you can play them on social media or anywhere to reach out the voters. So the same thing happened in Pakistan in 2024, 
where actually one of the politician was in jail. And there was also a lot of restrictions, how he can actually, his party cannot really do all the election rallies, etc. So what they did is they get the script from him, from the jail, create the AI videos using his clones, and then play those on the social media. So they used to have like online rallies. And at the end of the day, his party got the most number of seats in the election without doing any physical uh, rallies. Um, so, and then lastly, disinformation that also goes along with the with the previous presentation. We have deep fakes and all these kind of videos. We are already seeing those videos being released in 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 the U.S. The same thing is happening in India as well, and in almost any other country as well. So there's like a lot of videos that are particularly targeted to malign the opponents. So that's, that's even more concerning in terms of impacting the political results. So these are three main uh, aspects of the political campaigns. And then these are the recent usage of AI in, in, in each of these applications. Um, so then we come toward the, poll, uh, the challenges, and that is the future research direction as well. So the very first one is the LLMs, because most of the generative AI content is actually trained on these things. And then because the data is from the internet, most of the data is not really um, structured in a certain way. So it carries a certain bias, particularly in LLMs. Like for instance, ChatGPT is known to have a left leaning in, in, in terms of US uh, bias, like left or right. So imagine if somebody is from the right uh, leaning, politician is using a bot or a caller. So that already has a left bean leaning. So it can actually impact how they are being used or even for the person who is using it for the prop uh, propagating the left-wing ideologies, then it, it, it already is biased, the data source. Um, going along with it is the factfulness. Um, there's a lot of work already happening on the hallucination of the large language models and the facts. So when you have these kind of models uh, that are used to generate like color bots or all these kind of things, they can say anything that might not be true so that can actually impact the voters or electorates in when they are interacting with it. Then also comes a lot of things with the governance and the ethics. Uh, there are policies that are not really clear about how to use it. Um, it's easier for the governments to censor, like they can crack down social media, they can crack down certain uh, softwares, et cetera, in certain regions. And then most importantly is like uh, what really defines political speech and political ads. Um, for instance, in, in the US, they have different legislation for political ads or political speech. How does that impact when such things are like, or the political campaigns are driven by AI? So that is a whole new set of uh, era, like uh, arena in, in social media and AI combined. How can we actually govern these kind of data generation and how it's spread or how it's used? So these kind of things are not so clear at the moment. So that involves a lot of uh, uh, research or coming up with the new me uh, newer methods. Um, so just to conclude everything, um, well, there are good things about AIGC. It, it removes human labor in terms of a lot of political campaign processes. It improves the participation affordance and it also offers ubiquity availability. However, the challenges are in terms of um, bias, the factualness, and the governance guidelines. Um, so yeah, this is, I guess, almost on the time. Um, if you have any question, I'll be happy to answer.